There is a new buzz about exciting research and insights into what happens in the first 60 days of a newborn's neural development. So we're going to discuss why it's so important for dads to be aware of what happens in those first 60 days. So don't go away. Welcome to the Fatherhood Challenge, a movement to awaken and inspire fathers everywhere to take great pride in their role and to challenge society to understand how important fathers are to the stability and culture of their family's environment. Now here's your host, Jonathan Guerrero. Greetings, everyone. My guest is Claire Stead. Claire has been on the Fatherhood Challenge before in an episode called An App for New Dads, where she talks about the importance of the first thousand days of a baby's development. Now she's back to talk about the importance of the first 60 days and how that's different from the first thousand days. Claire is a wonderful, renowned educator, e-learning specialist and researcher. She's also the founder and developer of the famous Oliki app. Oliki is an app that allows dads to help their brains, their baby's brain development within the first thousand days. Claire, thank you so much for being on the Fatherhood Challenge. It's an honor to have you back. You know, I'm delighted to be here. Your audience are fabulous. Thank you for letting me share them again. Claire, how did you get your background in education and how did this lead to the development of the Oliki app? When I was five, I decided I wanted to be a teacher um, and I went through school and school for me was one of those mysteries that sort of, it was great fun, um, did a lot of lovely stuff, but I never quite worked out how to successfully navigate those exam periods. Um, So consequently, I did an awful lot of exams and had an awful lot of failures and an awful lot of trying to work it out. Anyway, finally made it through and did become a teacher. And at interview was asked, well, why should we take you? And my response was, well, I wouldn't if I were you. But if you do, I'm going to be a good teacher because I understand what failure is. And failure is rubbish. So I kind of set out on my career as a teacher, a primary school teacher. I was trained from three to eight, age three to eight. And I set out on my career to really nurture everybody to find their success, their talents, their 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 passions in life, um, to avoid failure and to learn to navigate those challenges that we inevitably come up against in life. Um, and so I worked around the world um, as a teacher. And one thing I noticed consistently wherever I worked was that there was a group of kids that would just arrive at school and thrive. They were the kids that would just gobble up any learning that you gave them uh, any which way and you kind of didn't really need to do any work to get them to learn and then there was another group of kids who would were brilliant at all sorts of things and had amazing skills but not necessarily the skills that we were looking for as teachers Um, and their skills were at avoiding doing any work (laughs) and so (laughs) I was trying to work out what made the difference between these children. What what was it in their journey to get to the classroom that made the difference between the ones that arrived and thrived and the ones that avoided any kind of work? And then, particularly as when they were little um, and they had been toddlers or babies and they'd seen a caterpillar on a leaf, say, they both would have been as captivated as each other um, watching that caterpillar move along the leaf and that they would have had the same amount of focus, the same amount of concentration. So what happened in that journey? Um, And then I also noticed that behind those children that were arguably failing, that weren't thriving in the environment of school, very often was a parent who stood alone in the playground, who was feeling lost and lonely and often feeling really judged. And I just thought, that's hideous. There's nothing worse than being that parent. Um, And I didn't want anyone else to have to go through it. So I sort of went on this adventure to try and find out what the answer might be. And that was when I stumbled on the learn the information about the brain development of the first thousand days. And that's the time from conception to two. Um, And and it's the time when the brain is developing at its its, uh, greatest, that it, it will in life. And I couldn't ignore it. And I realized that this was this was the reason that we were having so many challenges in school. So I kind of quit my job and 
rashly and and built the Aliki app as a solution to support parents from the first days of conception right up until their baby is two to ensure that their baby reaches their full potential, but also they become a parent who is confident in their parenting and feels amazing at what they're doing. We send out care packages to dads whenever we can. And there is information in those care packages about the Aliki app. And we stand by it because we are so proud of what the Aliki app is capable of. That is something we'll talk about later on in the program. We'll go into detail, a little more detail about how you can get the Aliki app. So what is all the excitement around the first 60 days and why should it be important for dads to understand? Brains are built through the experiences that happen to us. And this was something that said that I read the other day and it really, it, it sort of knocked me out, really. It said that all development happens through the brain. And I know that's obvious, but I hadn't really taken it in. Um, but it is, it's all centred in the brain. and And so all learning to walk, learning to talk, uh, learning to move your body, learning to know where you are in space, learning to ride a bike, learning to windsurf, that all starts in the brain. Um, and these brains are built in an environment of relationships. And so when you as a parent play or chat or interact with your baby, you are quite literally building their brain. And the environment we provide for our babies in the first 60 days, whether it's a good environment, or a bad environment literally impacts our baby's life outcomes in all areas of life, um, from their health, their mental health, their physical health, um, physical development, their emotional outcomes, their academics, and even how much they're going to go on to earn and and who they're going to marry. Um, so ideally, every child grows up in this loving, responsive, nurturing environment. And Dr. Bruce Perry's research on the first 60 days shows that a child who's exposed to ad- what we call adverse childhood effects or ACEs in the first 60 days of life then goes on to have and then goes on to have an ordinary life um, when compared with a child who's exposed to these challenging circumstances after the first two months of life, fares much worse. So those who were born into challenging environments compared to someone who was born into a good environment and then went on to have a bad environment, um, fares much worse in all measured outcomes. So, So those 60 days that are that initially are good um, or bad literally affect their health, the baby's mental health, their resilience, their academics, all areas of their lives. So then you ask yourself, well, yikes, what are ACEs? Um, And those are basically traumatic events that happen before a child is 18. And in this case, what we're talking about is obviously those that happen before they're 60 days old. And those experiences interfere with a person's health opportunities and stability through life. And also they impact on their next generation, amazingly. So an ACE or an adverse childhood effect would be physical abuse, sexual or emotional abuse, um, living with someone who does drugs or drinks too much alcohol or exposure to domestic violence or being living with someone who then gets sent to prison or is in prison. Um, being around someone with a serious mental illness or losing a parent due to death or divorce or abandonment or even being in a neglectful environment where a parent isn't nurturing and responsive. Um, And horrifyingly, they are incredibly common. Um, I'm obviously from the UK and in 2014, a UK study on the um, adverse childhood effects, found that 47% of people experienced at least one adverse childhood effect, with 9% of the UK population experiencing four or more. And in the US, a 2019 CDC study found that 61% of adults had experienced at least one adverse childhood effect, with 16% experiencing four or more with women 
and several racial and ethnic minority groups being at a greater risk for experiencing a higher number of, of adverse childhood effects. And the experiences our babies have in the first 60 days of life are some of the most powerful because of the, bra- the rate that the brain is developing. So the important element to focus on in these first 60 days is helping new parents and parents-to-be to understand their impact and the impact of the environment that they're enabling um, babies to experience um, and making sure that, 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 that they are enabling consistent, responsive, caring adult relationships that, and that helps the child develop successfully. It's, it's, it's in that connection and that attachment and attunement that we literally build our baby's brains. You've been on the fatherhood challenge before talking about the importance of the first thousand days for new listeners and those that need a review. What is the first thousand days all about and how does it compare with the first 60? Okay. So the first thousand days, obviously that's longer. Um, that goes from conception to two and it's all about building brains and it's all about giving um, experiences from conception to two and nurturing um the couple, the parents, and and the, fa- the, the the couple to become confident parents, to become a family, and supporting them to understand the impact of the time of, of tiny playful moments that they're going to have with their children um, as their children are, are developing. The first sixty days is is about supporting um, both parents to understand the power of developing responsive, deep engaged relationships with their children and for dads this is often best done through that wonderful thing called play um and the elite <laughs> obviously can support you with both of these things from conception to two but it's the tiny activities you do with your bump dads i'm i'm, I'm talking to you um it's those tiny ones that you do with them when they're in utero that that little chapter you have through the tummy the little lying down and telling them about your day, um, the, the the stroke of the tummy, the the feeling of the um, uh, the kicks, those sort of connection moments. That's where you're starting to build your baby's brain, and and also when they're a baby, it's the way that you play and you 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 have fun with your baby. And as a toddler, it's, it's, it's the way that you connect and you have giggles and you do chase me Charlies and you run around and you play together. Um, and it's all those tiny, tiny activities you do are laying the foundations of fabulous outcomes. And in the first thousand days, it's like building a pyramid where what we do is we want to create this really strong, firm foundation of um, for the pyramid that's a wide base of experiences, rich experiences of of tiny joyful moments, of playful moments. Um, And our babies learn from the ground up. They learn um, tiny skills, building tiny skills, which ultimately become milestones. And if you think of it like a pyramid, each of those skills is a brick in the pyramid. And you need to lay all of the first layer of foundation before you can and they form the foundation of the next layer of bricks. And the reason, and, and ultimately that is all working towards uh, supporting that top pinnacle of the pyramid, which is the finished child, whatever that looks like. Um, and s- the reason that I, I like the concept of the pyramid is because we need to build it all the way around rather than going up in one area. Quite often parents think that they if they um, scootle up um, and in one skill area, maybe you think of the child who's really good at kicking a football and just wants to kick the football again, 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 again. And as parents, we really encourage that because now look at my child prodigy, they can cook, kick a football. Um, sorry, a soccer ball. Did I do that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, or the parent who says my child can count to 100. But what happens is that, they're, that, that it's flimsy. There's no substance underneath it, so no supporting it. So if we think of the child who can count to 100, yeah, they can recite the number names, but they have no concept of the tenness of 10 and the, the 50-ness of 50. That, mm. And so they haven't actually learnt the numbers. They haven't learnt the, 
in-depthness of those numbers. And that only comes through rich experiences of counting footsteps, jumping in puddles and counting those, of going to the supermarket and counting out the apples and um, picking up shells on the beach and put, counting them out as you put them in the bags. It's it's only through our conceptualization of those um, ad, um, those abstract experiences that we begin to really understand them. So that's why I talk about the pyramid, because what we do is put really strong foundations in through giving really rich experiences over a period of from conception right the way through to two. In, in, and in conception, what we're thinking about is how are we functioning as, as, as a couple? Where are we fixing the holes, fixing the challenges, thinking about our past and who we want to become and how we want to parent? And then when the child is a, is a baby, moderating our playfulness to be um, appropriate for the baby and then ultimately in toddlerhood growing with the bait with the toddler and allowing the risk taking and the challenge that that toddlers will will inevitably push for because they're trying to find their space and, and journey in their world so that's kind of how the differences happen speaking of the bottom of the pyramid there was a post that of yours that i saw that really fascinated me and the ultimate source from it actually came from the Oliki website. And that is the fact that play and work can be integrated so easily together. And on the Oliki website, there are several different um, examples of that, where you can integrate s- just small little tasks that help the brain, that will help your baby's brain development. You can integrate those tasks into household chores and things that you need to do anyway. And for me, when I, when I read that, it looked more like a framework or a guideline for how to expand and do this on the much larger scale. And so the challenge was thrown out to go look at those, those examples and see if you can build on that to other areas of your life, of your daily routine, things that where you can integrate that playtime with your baby. So your baby is learning while you're actually trying to be productive and you are both working together on goals at the same time, which also increases the bonding experience. So that to me was really fascinating. One of the things that particularly for dads, you know, that that often they're the ones that are at work and they still got jobs to do at the weekend and they've still got their hobbies and they've still got the things that they want to do. But often dads do really cool stuff. So if you need to fix the car, fantastic. Fix the car, but and you've got a newborn. Put them on a, you know, like on a, I don't know. We call them donuts here, like a soft padded uh, mat thing, up on mm-hmm. the car with you, and uh, make sure they're safe, and you're not going to drop stuff on them and all the rest of it. Um, but why not give them a spanner to play with and talk to them about what you're up to while you are mending the car and have the yes. conversations. You know, and and if it's a toddler, they're very good at fetching and carrying and being your tool, your tool guy, and or girl. Um, yes. I've got a fantastic picture of my young, of my number two. Actually, it was seven o'clock at night, and my husband was building the house, and he was it was an old beam, and he's taking nails out of this old beam. Now, lots of people would say, no, 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 stay away, it's dangerous. But actually, what my husband did was got tell him to go and get his plastic toolkit. And he went and got his plastic toolkit and he's in his pyjamas and they're in the garden at seven o'clock at night. And in the UK, that obviously means we've got nice, lovely, light summer's evenings. And they're supposedly both pulling out nails. Well, of course, Oliver's not pulling out the nails, but he is thinking he is. And he's he's practicing and copying dad because kids learn through that mimicking and that, that uh, you know, being together and following the cues of the adult. And what that what that does is that massive bonding. But also, as they get older, they know that they need to go and get their tools, and they crack on and get their tools, and they come and join in because you've enabled it. So if you want a teenager who will help in the garage or mowing the lawn or whatever it is your hobby is, then start them young. So, for example, with a brand new baby, you can ask them as you unpack the dishwasher, do you think we should use this t- this Tupperware or that Tupperware? Okay, they can't answer. It doesn't matter. 
but between you you're making that you're having that conversation you're beginning to make um, decisions and then as they get older they can you're making the dinner and you know you're mixing and stirring why can't they have a plastic uh, bowl and a wooden spoon and do the mixing and stirring and discuss how you're both making the same thing um mm. and as a toddler they can help you put things away from the dishwasher or, or from the draining board um especially if you cite in your kitchen your pans and your non-destructibles, your Tupperwares, <laughs> down low, they can easily put them in the cupboard. They're not going to be put away properly, but there's no reason why they can't join in and help. Sorting the washing, that's another and great, great And make great memories along the way. I, okay, I have this funny um, image in my mind or fun memory that my wife and I love to talk about and share and bring up. <laughs> and so... We started involving um, our both of our toddlers in emptying the dishwasher and little tasks like that, like what we, what you're talking about. And I have this funny memory of uh, of our toddler just scooping his hands into the silverware and then just picking them up and then just throwing them into the dish to the silverware drawer <laughs> and they were just flying everywhere all over the place and he would just pick them up like they were just dirt off the ground and just throw them. <laughs> And it was so much fun. You'd hear the clanking of the metal everywhere as it just just flew out everywhere, all over the drawer. And we had to sort it later, and we could have cared less that we we were just enjoying that moment. And the funny thing is, we know that our son was enjoying it just as much. He felt involved. He felt included, uh, and he was learning a chore that he still does. So I, I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I was telling you about the fact that, that my number two son was uh, helping with building the house and taking things apart. Well, our, he went through this massive stage of literally he was taking everything apart. Now he was sort of like, I don't know, five, I suspect. And I came, he was silent. You know, when it, it's like, no, this is too silent. I need to go and have a look. And I went round and I found him in the utility space and <laughs> He had literally taken my vacuum cleaner, every single part of it, and I mean every part of it, was a part. And he was gone. And that you kind of knew where he'd been because there was this trail of things that he'd taken apart. <laughs> He's since, he since learned to put them all back again, but <laughs> there was a very long period of, oh, he's been here. <laughs> Um, so we're working really hard to um, to spread the word about the unique impact um, of these really early days on developing child and the work that Deborah McNellys is doing um, on the developing the first 60 days movement is also really helping to spread the words amongst both practitioners and policymakers and, and parents. And what she's doing is she's collecting together movers and shakers who are um, working in this space. Um, but she's also making um, like um, magazines so that people can find out more about it and the impact of, of this period of time and what they can do about it and how they can use the time. Because um, it's not very well knowing that what you shouldn't do, but it's how do you use the time successfully? Um, and that's why she's gathered together all these practitioners and is trying to spread the word that way. And I think it's taking off, uh, you know, it's becoming better known but it's inevitably uh getting stuff from research into actual real life actionable stuff takes time i've been following deborah's work and she is absolutely brilliant with what she's doing and uh she will be actually on a an, on an upcoming episode and i'm really looking forward to that so i'm glad you brought that up but yeah you definitely should take a look at what she's doing if you mm. haven't already because it is really changing the way we are thinking about those first 60 days and just how important they really are. So dads used to be really quite hands off and many still seem to think that the first few, the first early stage of life is kind of more for mums to build the relationship with the baby and to nurture the baby and to manage um, and to learn to feed and do the sleeping and all that jazz um, and to get to know what they're doing and to get to know the baby. But actually this is the brain building stuff. Doesn't, doesn't work like that um, because 
dads have an incredibly unique relationship with their baby and that's a relationship away from their partners um so there's kind of three relationships here you've got you as a as a as a couple however that looks um and it might be you as a single person but but you don't do that in in isolation you inevitably have community around you so it's it's the relationship of the of the of the carer then you have the child and parent one and the child and parent two um let's say parent two is dad um so everybody needs to make their own relationships and and so mum and dad need to make their relationship and then the family needs to build a relationship so there's there's sort of three relationships all being built at the same time and nobody is an expert in any of those things um and so it doesn't mean it means so it's your job to learn about your unique baby and build your exclusive and inclusive relationship of them in what you do. Claire, how can dads connect with you, get access to the Aliki app and learn more about the first 60 days? You can follow me on the socials. Um, so at Aliki across most platforms at Aliki underscore learning on Twitter. And then um, Aliki is in all the app store. Uh, well, the two main app, app stores, um, Android and Apple app stores and just under Aliki. I'm also going to make it easy to find. So if you go to the fatherhood dot com, that's the fatherhood dot com. Go to this episode, look right below the description. All the links will be there so you can find everything easily. As we close, what is your challenge to dads listening now? Oh, I've got a good one for you. And I really want to do this. <laughs> and I would, do you know what? I'd be so chuffed if you do. Um, I would absolutely love it if you could pop on the socials and tell me when you've done it. Because honestly, I am going to be made up and so excited for you. There's nothing more exciting than hearing your successes. And if you pop a little video or photo as well, whoa, you get gold stars and brownie points. Um, so if you can go and play with your baby, but watch their reactions, play at their level and be really responsive and see if you can follow the lead. You can to help you you can use the Aliki method to enhance your connection and your attachment and your attunement, which is tuning into your baby. Claire, it has been an absolute honor to have you on the Fatherhood Challenge. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And, and I, what, what I'll also do is give you a couple of um, really cute uh, YouTube videos, um, links that you can put in your, um, at the end of the, the in, on the Fatherhood Challenge uh, website uh so dads can see what success looks like because that's i would love that yeah thanks for having me anyway it's been amazing thank you for listening to this episode of the fatherhood challenge if you would like to contact us listen to other episodes find any resource mentioned in this program or find out more information about the fatherhood challenge please visit thefatherhoodchallenge.com that's thefatherhoodchallenge.com